Welcome back to my channel everyone, glad you could join me. About a month ago I posted a video on YouTube on how to shoot HDR images. And like always I get good comments and bad comments but it comes with the territory. Quite a few people agreed with me that even in 2021 we need to shoot in HDR because sometimes the dynamic range of our image outweighs our camera. Even though I have a Nikon D500 which has a great dynamic range, sometimes while I'm photographing the dynamic range is too great to actually capture in one image. Why struggle and try to bring out so much of the shadows and get a lot of extra noise? Instead shoot a set of bracketing images, three or five, then you get your whole dynamic range. You get your highlights, you get your shadows, you get your midtones, all in one and you can edit this very well in your favorite editing program. I use Adobe Lightroom and Photomatix Pro to actually blend the images into a HDR. I know HDR photography is not everyone's cup of tea. HDR photography gets bad rap because of images like this. Isn't this great? Beautiful tree trunk at sunset. You got the nice sun behind it. That sky is just perfect, isn't it? I'm being sarcastic here because this is not HDR photography that I do. I over edit them to show you what people think HDR photography is because some people when they edit their HDR images they just push the boundaries too much and they end up with images like this. But this image here, this is the same tree trunk at sunset. It is great. Now this was taken quite a long time ago with my Nikon D7000, just a 16 megapixel camera. The dynamic range of this camera just couldn't handle this. The shadows were just so strong in front of the tree trunk here. The only way I could shoot this was shooting three images in a bracketed set so I could get my sky, which are the highlights, and the shadows, which are the trunk in front of me here. And it ended up blending a great image. And I've posted this photo a long time ago and I never told anybody that it was a HDR image and nobody knew it was a HDR image. And this is the key. If you edit your images correctly has a HDR image, hardly anybody will know. Now today I'm going to show you how I edit my images in Adobe Lightroom Classic and in Photomatix Pro. But I've already blended an image in Adobe Lightroom has a HDR image and I will show you that this is why I don't use the tool in Adobe Lightroom to blend my HDR images because for me I want consistency. I want to be able to replicate good outcomes all the time and I found that the HDR plugin in Adobe Lightroom isn't consistent. Sometimes bang it's bang on I'm happy. Sometimes it does a woeful job. I just don't have the time of seeing is it going to do a good job? Isn't it going to do a good job? I prefer to say, okay, I know that Photomatix Pro gives me the results that I want. I'm going to go to my plugin of Photomatix Pro and I'm going to edit all my HDR images in Photomatix Pro. Now Photomatix Pro is not free, but you can trial it for 30 days for free. There's no watermark on your images, so you can edit as many images as you like in that one month. So before we go any further and start editing this image, the image on the right here that you can see is the HDR image done in Adobe Lightroom. And it looks very flat, which would mean I would have to do a lot more editing to it. Look at the image on the left here. This comes straight out of Photomatix Pro. The only downside is the Lightroom image is still a DNG file. You're still in RAW. Photomatix though is a TIFF file. Some people harp on about this. To me, it doesn't matter. I really like this TIFF file on the left here. And I'll show you now how I got this image. We have our three images. Well underexposed image is on the left. The correctly exposed image is in the center and the overexposed image is on the right. We'll jump into the develop module. I just like grabbing the middle image because this is the correctly exposed image. This was shot with the Tekina 11 to 16. So we come up here to to lens correction, click on remove chromatic aberration, enable profile correction and bang, presto, it's detected the Tekina ATX 11 to 16 f2.8 lens. Now I will start editing the image. The first thing I do is actually slightly overexpose the image just so I can see the way the color is. We'll just grab the exposure slider here. That's all I want. 
it's quite cool and I don't want it this cool. So what I'll do is I'll come up to the temperature here. I'll just increase the temperature a little bit. Now as I go along and edit this, you will see that I don't edit the image too much. Remember, you're dealing with a set of images. You're not dealing with one image. If you push all these sliders to the max, this is where you're going to get your halos. Don't push your settings too much. Photomatics Pro will do the work for you when it blends all the images. Okay, I quite like the sky like that. Now I'm going to bring it back. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast. Now I'm going to touch the blacks, the whites, the shadows, and the highlights. I hold the Alt key. I'm using a PC. So you hold the Alt key down. Grab the black slider and look, I can see just there's a little bit of color there. I just want a clear white screen. The whites, I'll bring it down a little bit. You can see on whites, you want a clear black screen. I'll leave it there. I'll go up to the highlights now and then I'll slide the highlights to the left until I get a black screen. Visually, I'm just going to adjust the shadows. Not too much. I'll skip texture clarity and dehaze and I'll go to vibrance and saturation. I'll just add a little bit of vibrance, about 15 saturation probably about the same now here i'm looking at the sky i don't want to oversaturate this sky about 10. now clarity i can slide up probably around 15 to 20. same with texture now dehaze is something you have to be very careful of if you put too much dehaze in your hdr images you're going to get halos believe me we'll just add just a little bit of dehaze now i'll go down to my hue saturation and luminous so we click saturation Click this little toggle up here. I like using the little toggle. You can use the individual sliders, but remember, it's a landscape image. There's always more than one color tied in, so it's better using this little toggle. I just want to add a little bit of saturation down the bottom here. And you can see it's slid the orange and the red. Now we'll come up to the sky here, right up the corner. I just want to desaturate that a little bit. I don't want an overly blue image because once it's done as HDR, if it's not blue enough for me I can always add a bit of color but if there's too much now it's going to be very hard reducing it at a later stage that looks really good what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of sharpening but selective sharpening so what we do here you can see we have the amount the radius the detail and the masking again I hold the alt key and with the masking slider I just slide it to the right anything that has got a white outline is being sharpened and you notice the more I slide it to the right, the less the sky is getting sharpened. And that's what I want. Keep sliding it there because I just want the outline. Beautiful. Now I'll just increase the detail a little bit, the radius and the amount there. That looks really good. That's it. Now I've got to copy all the settings that I've done on this image to the other two images. There's two ways of doing this. The first way is just you click on the thumbnail here, click on it and you come up to develop settings and you go copy settings and here the dialog box pops up and you just choose everything that you've adjusted so I haven't cropped it I haven't done spot removal so I click that I'm happy with that I click copy now I just select the other two images right click on the mouse button again come up here to develop and click paste that's it both sets of images now have been synchronized with this one the other way of doing it is I hold this center image down hold the control key click on the underexposed image click on the overexposed image right click on it come up to develop settings and here i just click sync settings click on it and the same dialog box pops up there's just two ways of doing it and i just click synchronize that's it it's synchronized all the settings across the three images now we're ready to export to photomatics pro we make sure the three images are highlighted right click on it again and down the bottom here we have export and you can see here photomatics pro that's it now this is you've got to pay attention here we have align images if you shot on a tripod you click on a tripod if you shot handheld you click on handheld and there's three options here so it was on a tripod and here it says crop the align results I like just clicking that so that if there's just a slight amount of shift it'll just crop it in so you don't see any white outline now next one is show dialog box with options to remove ghosts if this was a windy day if I had branches blowing and all that I would click on this option and then you can actually say okay well this branch here it was moving a bit so you draw a circle around it and say this is moving and it will bring all that those branches together but there's no branches moving here so we unclick that I don't like reducing noise in Photomatics Pro. 
Adobe Lightroom is much better at doing this, so I leave it alone. Reduce chromatic aberrations, definitely give that a tick. Now here, automatically re-import into Lightroom Library, definitely. And you've got to make sure, combine file names. This way, if you've got three, five or seven file names, you'll see it'll have the first file name and then a dash and then three, five or seven or whatever you took. My output is TIFF 8-bit. We click export. Wow, look at that. This is so ghastly, but it just remembers the last thing that I did. So this is, I was just having a play around to see how bad I could get a HDR image. We don't want that. And you see on the right here, these are all the presets that come with Photomatix. If you're a little bit worried that you might get it wrong in the manual sliders on the left here, you can click one of these presets. We have detailed. Look at that. Detailed, that's it. Click and it's done. Look at it. It's so good. Right out of the box, you have balanced. You have realistic, photographic. You can see photographic. This is what basically your photo would look like if it was taken just in a single shot. But we don't see all that nice detail in that tree trunk there. Then we have natural, paintly, and this is where it can get ghastly. We can come back up here to detail. That looks really nice out of the box. We can actually add to this. On the left, we have detail enhancer, and you've got all the different types of ways that you can actually make a HDR. We have detail enhancer, contrast optimizer, tone balance. I just like using detail enhancer because it gives me the maximum amount of sliders so that I can really fine tune my image before I drop it back into Adobe Lightroom. The first slider up here is the strength. I don't like going more than 50%. Because once you go over 50%, that's when you start getting problems with halos and all that. Look, if I go to 90% here, can you see around the tree? You can start seeing a halo. But if I come down to 50 and I'll come down to about 40% here, look at that. The blend is quite nice. So it's pretty good. The tone compressor and the detail contrast, I like keeping them together on the right side, but not too much. We'll take it up to about 3.9 on each, a little bit less. What this does is just adds a bit of contrast, a bit of detail in your image. The tone compression just compresses your tones to actually enhance your HDR image. Don't overdo it and it'll be fine. Now lighting adjustments, think of it this way. Where is the sun in your image? In this image, the sun is directly in front of us. So I can have it right in the center. If the sun was to the right of the image, then I would put the lighting adjustment three quarters away to the right because I'm saying this is where the sun is. It's going to balance out that very bright area. If the sun was to the left of halfway, then I would put it to the left of halfway. Here it's right in the middle. So I'm going to put it right in the middle to get a very nice detail. To give you an idea, I will slide it all the way to the left. It's a little bit hard, but look at the, the shade here. On the left here, it is much brighter than the right. And if I slide it all the way to the right again, did you see how it changed? Watch carefully. I'll slide it all the way to the left and you'll see how it's changing. Very subtle. So we'll just bring it back to center because that's where I want it. Now under here, there's a little tick box here. Lighting effects. This is where you can just add more effects on your lighting. So you have natural, natural plus, medium, surreal, surreal plus. Look carefully, you can see halos there. I don't want that. I could click on natural, but even natural, there's a bit of a halo there. So I'll untick it and I'm just going to rely on that lighting adjustment slider. Now here we have smoothing highlights. You can right slide to the right and it just smooths the highlights a little bit more. Now I'll just leave it about halfway. Then we have our white point and our black point. If we slide the white point down, it's darkening the image a bit. Select the white point up a little bit. We'll bring the black point a bit up. Micro smoothing, I'll leave it where it is. In the color settings here, we have saturation, temperature, and brightness. This is where if I want to add a bit more saturation, I can. See, like if I slide all the way, look at this. To me, that's just way too bright. I don't like putting too much saturation. Remember, it's going back into Lightroom, and this is where I do the final touch up. The temperature, we'll just bring the, the warmth up just a little bit. It's the end of the day, it's sunset. What you're seeing on the foreground here should be warm because it's the, the light is just hitting that on such a sharp angle that it's going to give those warmth rays there. So you don't want that just to be gray. You've want a bit of warmth there and I'll leave the brightness alone. 
Now look at this last slider here, the opacity slider. This is where you can say, okay, how much HDR of everything that I've done now, all the editing, how much of that do I want in my final image? Because it's at 100% at the moment. So everything we did has been applied 100%. If you feel you're know, looking at it, oh, it's just a little bit too much, but it might be too hard to go back and retouch up all those sliders. You're pretty happy with everything, but you think that the HDR is just gone a tad too much. This is where the opacity slider really comes in. Watch what happens if we slide it to the right. Can you see that the image is changing? At 99, at 100, there's no HDR effect. This is just a single exposure in the middle. When we bring it back to the left here, the more we go to the left, the more of all our settings are applied. I'll leave it at where it is there because it is so good. I like this image. I want to save it as a preset for my own. And you see just underneath here it says preset unlisted. So I click on this and it's up here, save preset. Look at this. These are all the presets that I've already created for myself. See I have HDR tree 1, HDR tree 2, sunset clouds 1, sunset clouds 2. I could say for this one here, I could say sunset tree 01 and click save. Now see the preset sunset tree 01. So if I ever have another image that's similar to this, then I can just click on that preset and everything that I've done to this image will automatically be applied. It saves you time. That's what presets are for. They save time. If it's not exactly to your liking, then you can just slightly adjust the preset, but you're not starting from zero. You want to save time. You don't want to be sitting in front of the computer for hours. I certainly don't. We're happy with this. We come down to the right here, it says save and re-import. So, we click save, you can see it's saving it. Now we'll just go back to Adobe Lightroom. There's our image there. Doesn't that look so good? We'll go back to develop mode and look at it. I could just leave it like that. It's beautiful, don't you agree? If you don't agree, leave it in the comment box below because I certainly feel that this is just so good. It hasn't pushed the boundaries too much and it looks realistic. Remember, that's the aim, a realistic image. And that's it, I'll click it to 100% and look. Can you see a halo around that tree trunk? I can't, look at that. It is so nice. Now, these dots that you could see here on the tree trunk, because I was shooting directly into the sun, these are just sunspots that they're just hitting the lens. If I really want to be picky from here, I could export the image into Adobe Photoshop and just use Content Aware to take them out. Like this, to remove all the spots. Now, I just save my image. I hope you can see how using Photomatix Pro and Adobe Lightroom together to give you a HDR image is just so much better than just trying with a single image like this. This is just a single shot. Even with my D500, I just couldn't get it because the dynamic range is too much. And if I could, you would see so much noise because remember, if it's dark in your photo, there's no detail there. So you're pulling out the shadows, but there's nothing there. You're just going to see so much noise. So I hope with this tutorial, you can see how easy it is to use Adobe Lightroom Classic and Photomatix Pro together to give you realistic HDR images. Enjoy photography, and I'll see you next time.